stand across this sanctuary tonight and turning our hearts and minds together toward the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's focus in on the touch of heaven tonight in this prayer meeting. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, name above all names, worthy of all praise, God. My heart will sing how great thou art, Lord Jesus. The heaven is thy throne and the earth is thy footstool, O Lord. The heaven of heavens cannot contain your glory, Lord Jesus. God, you are our healer, Jehovah Rapha, who strikes, healed us, O Lord. God, that you take the stripes and Calvary, Lord Jesus, that we might have a healing virtue. God, think of the glory tonight that we're going to give you name, Jesus. God, we're going to adore you, exalt you, Lord Jesus. Lift your name on high because you have healed our bodies, God. God, you have saved our souls, oh Lord. God, you have delivered us from so great a death that death deliver. And we trust you shall yet deliver us, O Lord, God of heaven, Jesus. God, in this sanctuary tonight, God, I pray that miracles would flow from the throne of heaven. God, let miracles flow from the throne of heaven tonight, Jesus. Now even the views upon your people, O Lord. God, come now in this sanctuary, Lord Jesus. God, may the red hot breath of God breathe upon us, everyone, Jesus. God, let us feel the power and the function of the heaven, I pray, Lord. That's why we praise you, Lord, because you are great and greatly to be praised. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending, the first and the last, which was and is and is to come, you are almighty God. You have all power, Lord Jesus. You are all-knowing, Lord God. You are our power, you are our strength, Lord. You are everything, Jesus. God, feed us with bread from heaven tonight until we want the Lord, God. Fill us up, O oh Lord Jesus. Let our cups run over, God. God, let it spill out of us and to everyone around us, God. God, let us overflow tonight, I pray, Lord Jesus. We lift our eyes up to you, Lord. For our help comes from you, Lord Jesus. Our help comes from above, mighty God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. If you came to give the Lord praise tonight, let's come into this sanctuary and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. In the beauty of holiness.
church house. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And we bless you, Lord Jesus. We honor you and adore you, God. We bow down before you. Amen. The Lord bless us as we're making our way back to our places tonight. And you may be seated. In Jesus' name, God's richest blessings upon your life tonight. Amen. Is anyone thankful for the blessings of the Lord on their life tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful Sunday we had this past Sunday morning. And Sunday night saw many people water baptized in the mighty name of Jesus and filled with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. And then to come in here on January the 11th, 2022, on this wonderful Tuesday night, to see the saints of God in here on this Tuesday night midweek service, and then to be here with God's wonderful people, feeling the wonderful touch of the Lord in this house. I don't know about you, but I like what I feel in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. It's contagious. It is contagious. Amen. And we need to infect one another with our emotions of joy and happiness, peace and contentment in God. What can compare to that? David said in Psalm 121 and 1, Lord, I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. It's easy to get your eyes fixed on things down here. It's easy to get preoccupied with what's happening down here. And if you're not careful, it'll get the best of you. You will wonder what in the world is going on. And you'll forget that God's got everything in control. But when you get your eyes up above sea level and get your eyes on Jesus, amen. Man, I want to get my eyes on the Lord tonight. The one that nobody else can see. That's the one I'm looking for tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what David had to learn how to do for 14 years. He ran like an animal from men that sought his life. But when you get your eyes up on Jesus Christ, it makes everything look better tonight. And that's where I want to focus tonight. It's on Jesus. Amen. Lift us up above the shadows, dear God. Plant our feet on higher ground. Amen. That's what I'm wanting the Lord to do here tonight. This Sunday is coming up for a wonderful Sunday. Revival service is beginning Sunday morning and Sunday night with a tremendous evangelist for the great Brian is going to be with us. Preaching on Sunday morning and Sunday night. I want you to bring out friends and loved ones, co-workers, amen, and bring them out to the house of the Lord. And let's come expecting great things to happen this Sunday morning and Sunday night. We've got a tremendous evangelist going to be preaching for us. And then the following week as well, on the 23rd, tremendous men of God are going to be preaching to us on these next two weekends. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us. How about you? Amen. So, God's richest blessings upon your life. 2022, already 11 days into the year. And God, God is doing great things for us, whereof we are glad. Amen. Why don't you prophesy to somebody and tell them this is going to be your best year ever in Jesus' name. Amen. This is going to be your best year ever in Jesus' name. This is going to be your best year ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever the devil stole, let him have it. God's got something better for you anyhow. God's going to give you back everything that belongs to you. He's going to restore it. Amen. God's going to let you see it this year in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There is no telling. We sincerely want to thank you for joining us in today's service here at Life Tabernacle in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It means so much to us that you have taken time to worship God with us today in our online service. As you can see, 
there are many people marching and giving by way of tithing and offering at this time while you are viewing this video. We encourage you to get involved in the tithe and the offering. The Bible says to give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And when you give into the church, into our ministry, I assure you that you are sowing your seed into good ground and it is going to produce a great crop for many people, including yourself. So God richly bless you in Jesus name. We'll see you back in the service in a few moments.
record giving financially, God expanding the place of our tent, God enlarging our habitation, a footprint that reaches to all 50 states and six out of seven continents, people all over this nation and across this world who hold membership in Life Tabernacle, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We pray for you and God bless you tonight. Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Fully committed, fully committed. God bless us as we're seated in the fear of the Lord this evening, looking for someone whose heart is perfect toward him. Fully committed. The eyes of the Lord are scanning the earth tonight. He's looking in this city. He's looking in your neighborhood. He is scanning the entire sphere of the earth. And he's looking for someone that he can show himself strong on their behalf. Looking for someone who is fully committed whose mind is made up that they're going to do everything that they possibly can for God. What criteria is he searching out? The Bible tells us a perfect heart. It doesn't mean that you are sinless. If that be the case, then God would not find anyone tonight because none of us are sinless. None of us will ever reach the place in our lives where we are sinless and never need to repent or never do come short or never do live a life above sin and failure. But that word perfect here means somebody that is fully committed and is mature and is set on living for God to the best of their abilities. Bible tells us in the book of 2 Chronicles, the 31st chapter and the 21st verse, it talks about a man who said, and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God he did it with all his heart and prospered think about a man that the Bible can ascribe such tremendous attributes to him in every work not just some of the things that he did not just a portion of his life, but the Bible explicitly declares that in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all of his heart. The Bible doesn't suggest it. The Bible doesn't recommend it, but it commands you that whatsoever thy hands find to do, do it with all of your heart as unto the Lord. When we leave the, the, the fourth verse of Deuteronomy 6, the Bible said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, 
And this is how I want you to know that and live that and rehearse that. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. I'm looking for somebody that's fully committed tonight, the Lord said. He said, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength, everything that is within you, this is how I want you to love me, the Lord said. And, and look what 2 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse number 3 says. That this man by the name of Hezekiah, who in every work of the service of the house of the Lord, it begins his kingship with saying, he in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. This king Hezekiah that was fully committed unto God knew that if he was going to be pleasing unto the Lord, he needed to get the house of the Lord right in his life. He, didn't, he did not assemble his army. He did not do that first. He did not build up the granaries in the silos first. He did not he did not do any of these things first. But the first thing that he did was he repaired. He opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. First things first, he said. Let's open the church doors first. There ought to be an expectancy in every child of God's life. Amen. When Tuesday afternoon rolls around, that I've got to get to the doors of the house of God. There ought to be an expectancy in the life of every saint of God that Saturday evening, tomorrow morning, Sunday, and I'm going to come out to the house of God, and I'm going to come to those doors with a great expectancy that God is going to do something great in my life. I'm telling you, you ought to be on the edge of your seat, so to speak. You ought to be listening for God's voice, because the Bible said in Luke 10 and 19 Behold I give you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And God is looking for somebody with a heart that is fully committed whose mind is made up and his eyes are stayed on Jesus. Amen. That no devil and no weapon and no enemy is going to prosper against him. But God gave us power. Do you know that God gave every one of you power tonight to tread on serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means be able to harm you. I can't imagine people that profess godly Christianity but live a life of fear and cowardice and intimidation and, and timidity. Hey, when you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they ought to put a holy boldness down in your heart. Hey, man, that says, devil, I'm not afraid of you for one minute. Scorpions and serpents, God has given us power to stomp on them and to squash them through the power of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible said, But ye shall receive power. That word power in the Greek is the word dunamis. That's where we get the English word TNT, trinitrotyoline. That means dynamite. Hey, the Bible said ye shall have dynamite. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If some of you could get a glimpse tonight of just how frightened the devil really is of the church and the saints of God, he's not afraid of this building. He's not afraid of an organization. He's not afraid of a title. He's not afraid of any of that. But he's afraid of somebody that's got the power of the Holy Ghost because he knows that the Holy Ghost is greater in you than anything in this world. And it ought to be a witness in you. 
and ye shall receive power that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses. The world needs the witness that there's a difference in the lives of the people of God. Amen. We are in the United States of America. We are, we are in delusion tonight. That, that word delusion is defined as a false belief considered to be true even with the existence of evidence that proves to be contrary. I saw the news just this evening before coming to church that the, that the, the teachers union here in East Baton Rouge Parish, they have in a 15 minute press conference, they said we demand that we go to virtual learning. We demand that you close the schools down. We demand that you lengthen the time of sick leave. Amen. And do you know our children have already lost two years of education. Our children are already being taught to detach themselves from reality. And you can't explain it any other way but as mass psychosis. And we are in delusion tonight in America. Amen. And, and you know what needs to happen is we need some leaders with a backbone that will get up and fire every last one of them. And say those children need to go to school and eat a hot meal and learn about history and math and reading and writing. Amen. And parents can work and provide for their families whenever they're home babysitting children that ought to be in school. Amen. There needs to be some power in the people of God tonight that will rise up and try to set things in order in our city and in our nation. Enough of the fear. Enough of the timidity. Enough of the cowardice. Enough of the backwardness. that the devil's trying to destroy our nation, the devil's trying to destroy our young people, the devil's trying to take our nation to the bottom, but if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will God heal America, then will God save our children. Amen. Amen. God said, if you want a healing in your land, pray to me. Right. Amen. Quit praying to the government. Quit, and, and you know what? Those teachers' unions don't have a backbone at all if they don't stand by their word and, and quit going to school. If you really do demand and you really do have power, you need to stick by what you're saying. Amen. And we can go on with the rest of our lives. I'm telling you that America's in deep trouble tonight. But we need people that are fully committed to speak the truth in love and tell it like it is and say enough of the devil witchcraft, enough of the devil's sorceries, enough of the devil's foolishness. Isn't it about time that the people of God take their rightful place in society and be the head and not the tail? Amen. Fully committed. Amen. When you sign on to do a job, you're fully committed to that job. Don't let anybody do it better than you. Don't, don't cop out what you signed up to be. Amen. Don't, don't shirk your task and your duties. Amen. Look what happened here. The Bible said in 2 Chronicles chapter 26 and verse number 19 that there was a king by the name of Uzziah. Uzziah was so irreverent toward the priest in the house of God that, that in 2 Chronicles, uh, the 26th chapter, and about uh, the, the 19th verse, uh, that Uzziah went into the temple and he burned incense on the altar. And the priest came in behind him with 400 other priests uh, and said, you can't do that. You're not the man to do that. And he had such irreverence before God. And he wanted to, he wanted to minimize the importance of the men of God in his life and the, and the position of the priest in his life that he reached out and rebelled against them and God struck him down with leprosy. That leprosy, amen, claimed unto Uzziah and he died a leper. He had a son and his son learned his lesson from Uzziah, his dad. Look what happened in 2 Chronicles 27 and 2. The Bible said about his son Jotham that 
that that Jotham never did go into the house of the Lord. He entered not into the temple of the Lord. He looked at his dad and said, my dad became a leper in church. Therefore, I'm never going to go to church. He correlated his dad being a leper with going to church. No, you need to learn from your lessons what you need to learn from your lessons. He didn't become a leper because he went to church. He became a leper because he did not respect God's authority. And he touched God's anointing. And God made him a leper in church. And Jotham said, no, well, I'm never going to go to church. And then look what happened in 2 Chronicles 28 and 24. Bible talks about the successor to Jotham. Look at the generational uh, devolution downward in 2 Chronicles 28 and 24. Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God and he cut them in pieces and he shut the doors of the house of God. Uzziah became a leper in church. Jotham said, I'm never going to church. And look what this man did. He said, I'm going to nail the doors to the church shut. Amen. And Ahaz was a baby killer. He said, nobody's going to go worship. And the devil is having his way. The successive backsliding from generation to generation. But here comes a man by the name of Hezekiah. And he said, I'm going to first of all open the doors to the house of God. I'm going to re-implement the sacrificial offerings and I'm going to reconstitute worship. And you know what happened in 2 Chronicles chapter 30 and verse number 20? There had been disease in the land. There had been famine in the land. There had been idolatry in the land. But whenever this man Hezekiah was fully committed to do a work for God, the Bible said that when they began to worship and get rid of the idolatry and put the sacrifices back in place that God heard the prayers of the people and God healed their land. If you want God to bring healing to to America tonight, then let's put God back where he belongs. Let's put God back number one on Sunday instead of the National Football League. Let's make God number one on Sunday instead of the sports of America. Let's make God and murder and drugs. Let's make God number one in school instead of socialism and counterfeit God and godlessness. What we need in America is a revival of the truth of God's word, the absolute outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God heard his people and God healed the people. And while God is blessing and anointing and the power is falling and the blessings are flowing, 2 Chronicles 32 and 1, here comes King Sennacherib. And King Sennacherib invaded a holy people. As long as Uzziah was in charge, Sennacherib could care less about Israel. As long as Jotham was in charge, Sennacherib could care less about Israel. As long as this man Ahaz was in charge, the Sennacherib could care less about Israel. Oh, the devil could care less about churches that are virtual. The devil could care less about people that aren't storming the gates of hell in their city. The devil could care less about saints that don't pray. The devil could care less about saints that don't know their Bible. The devil but when you make a decision that you're going to be fully committed unto God, you better get ready because the devil's going to want to invade you. He's going to want to bring sickness on you. He's going to want to try to break your family up. He's going to want to try to molest your soul. But that's all the more reason to say if the devil hates me, I must be doing something right. If the devil's on my back, I must be doing something right. Some of you need to be worried tonight because the devil's not messing with you. Some of you that the devil's messing with you, you need to shout and count it all joy. Beloved, think it not strange this fiery trial, which is to try your faith as though it were some strange thing. 
thing, but rejoice in so much that the Lord has trusted you enough to be a warrior for Jesus. not afraid of you if you're not a worshiper. Devil's not afraid of you if you're unfaithful. Devil's not afraid of you if you're not a giver. But some of you that have committed, I know, I know I'm preaching to you right now. The devil is trying to make your life a living hell on earth. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to quit? Are you going to look at the devil and stand toe to toe and say, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Ghost is going to raise a stand you might fight me and I might lose but you're going to live a lifetime knowing you and I had an altercation I'm not going to lose because greater is he that is in me amen. amen the devil fights who he fears he fights dirty he never forgives and he never forgets the more you do for God the more the devil is going to fight you. Right. Sennacherib didn't care about Uzziah. Sennacherib didn't care about Jotham. Sennacherib didn't care about Ahaz. He'll stay where he is as long as the people of God are in idolatry. But just let a Hezekiah start doing something. Amen. Let a Hezekiah say, I'm fully committed. We're going to open the doors of a church. You get ready because Sennacherib is going to invade the land of Israel. Attack, attack, attack. Amen. And look what happened in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 32 and, and verse number 7. Ah, King Hezekiah said, oh Lord, you know that they've got a greater army than us. You know that they've got more soldiers than us. Here we are in this city and we're a small army compared to these surrounding armies. They're going to starve us out. They're going to try and, 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 and they're going to try and get us to surrender. And you know what the Lord said unto the king? He said, there's more with you than be with them. Theirs is an arm of flesh, but ours is the arm of God. There's more on the side of good than there is on the side of bad. I know it looks like you're outnumbered in the flesh. That's why you got to get out of the flesh and get in the spirit. Because there's more in the spirit. That's what happened whenever the enemy surrounded the valley of Dothan. And Joe and, 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 and Joseph is in Dothan. And here's Elisha in Dothan. And the Tagalog prophet woke up the prophet. Elisha and said, come out here. We're surrounded by the enemy. And Elisha said, God opened his eyes that he can see more be with us than be with him. You know why I'm not afraid of the devil tonight? Because I can see in the Holy Ghost. There's angels all around this house. There's healing virtue all in this house. There's miracles all over this house. There's blessings all over this house. I'm not afraid of what the economy is going to do. I'm not afraid of COVID-19, Delta, Omicron, uh, Flurona, or now they got Delta Cron. Amen. Some of you that got the sickness last week, you should have waited to today. It's got a brand new name today. And there's going to be a new name tomorrow. But when you have the Holy Ghost, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thou art afraid of. I will fear no evil. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? I know the devil's troubling you. And I know some of you haven't gone through anything like what you're going through since you've been coming to church. And since you've been trying to live for God. And since you made a commitment to God. But the eyes of the Lord are going throughout the whole earth. He's looking for someone to show himself strong on their behalf. I'm looking for somebody that's committed. in such a fix. I'm going to get them in such trouble that, that they're going to be afraid for their life and they're going to pray to me and, and they're so fully committed to me. I know they're not going to back down when the going gets tough and the way gets hard and the night gets dark and, and, and I know they're not going to back up because they're fully committed. I'm going to let the enemy surround me then I'm going to bring my angel armies in among them. And I'm going to make the devil pay dearly. I'm going to, and God sent an angel 
would cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and the captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. I know some of us don't know what to do. Our jobs are at stake. Our mortgages are in trouble. Our finances are on the own shaky ground. But the Lord's going to send his angel and he's going to confuse the men of valor. God's eyes tonight. The mountain is full of chariots of fire in this house. The, this, this atmosphere is full of the angels of God. The Lord is looking for somebody right now that he can show himself strong on their behalf. If I can find one heart that's fully committed, perfect, if I can find somebody that's got a fixed heart, I'm looking for somebody. I'm going to put them on grandstand. I'm going to put them on parade. I might even let them go through what Job went through. But if they can hold their integrity, I'm going to give them double for their trouble at the end of their problem. If you can just hold on and do what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, you know what? The king said, I'm going to give you one more chance and you're going to bow down and worship this image and they said save your breath king we are not careful to answer you in this matter why are some of you so careful why are some of you so careful where is your Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego spirit amen why are you so careful we are not careful to answer you in this matter we will not bow down to your image and be it known unto thee O king you might put us in that fiery furnace, but we're not going to bow. And when we get in there, the Lord's already in there waiting on us. <laughs> Hallelujah. It got so bad for Sennacherib Jesus. that they returned with shame of face to their own land. And when he was coming to the house of his God, they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword. They said, we were supposed to go down there and defeat the people of God. Now we're going to kill you. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Oh, if you've never had God spread a table out before you, if you've never had God spread a table out before you with all the trimmings, and right there in the presence of your enemies, I've had my enemies to be looking down on me and thought they were going to intimidate me and thought they were going to get my joy. They thought they, oh no, God prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemies and I sat down and I had myself a good old time I sat down and I had myself a feast I don't know about some of you amen but when the Bible said that prepare us the table before me in the presence of my enemies God's not going to kill all your enemies God's going to keep them alive long enough so that they can see God bless you and bring confusion to their faith in the presence of my enemies. That's how come some of you that your enemies are really on you right now. You need to be fully committed because ain't nothing more satisfying than looking at those people that said you're never going to make it. You are a failure. We don't support you. We are not in favor of you. There ain't nothing like God because the Bible said, and every lying tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. God's got you on the, on the job of condemning the people that is lying about you. All you got to do is stay committed. Just stay the course. Just hold strong and stand. Don't be intimidated. Don't give up when the way gets hard. Don't give up when the battle. The race is not given to the swift. The battle's not given to the strong. But to him that can endure to the end. Amen. 
God's not looking for a sinless, That's right. Come on. mechanical robot of somebody that lives in a monastery and is a monk and is shut off from society. That's not realistic. The Bible is an ideal book, but there's no such thing as ideal people. God's not looking for somebody that doesn't slip up and take a drag on that cigarette again or slip up and, and go buy a bottle of whiskey again or slip up and do things you know you ought not do. No, you're not perfect tonight, but God's looking for somebody whose heart is fully committed. And that means, God, I made a mistake yesterday, but if by the help and grace of God, I'm going to do better today. I'm not what I'm supposed to be. I know I haven't done right, but God, I'm committed to making it. I know that I fall short more than not. But God, if you'll help me, I'm going to make it all the way. I cannot fail him now. I cannot fail him now. He has never failed me yet. Every promise he has kept. And I cannot that he ever made to me. I hadn't always kept everything that I told him, but that's no reason for me to give up on God. Some of you quit on God because of your mistakes. That's no reason to quit. God never quit on you. And Isaiah 22 and 9 let me tell you one of the reasons why trouble comes our way. Isaiah 22, 9. What a powerful portion of scripture here. God's looking for somebody tonight. He's looking for somebody. And in 22 and 9, ye have seen also the breaches of the city of David, that they are many, and ye gather together the waters of the lower pool. In 2 Chronicles 32 and 30, you know what Hezekiah did? Whenever the Sennacherib surrounded the, the city of Jerusalem, he had to build the wall around the Gihon Springs. He built the wall because there was a breach in the wall. And God says, I'm going to bring these enemies against you. And I need you to have enough common sense to know you're going to have to build the wall around your water source. Because without water, you're not going to survive in this city. You've got to have a well that's springing up. And you know what? He, he, he built the wall around the, around the Gihon Spring, and he built a tunnel. If you were to go to Jerusalem today, you could take the Hezekiah Tunnel Tour. That means you can go to the Gihon Spring on the wall of Jerusalem, and you can scale down that tunnel, and you'll wind up in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. Shalom, it means peace that is sent here. And the waters pooled at Siloam. And the reason that God allows Sennacherib to come against the city is so that the people of God could build a wall around their spring and fortify their fortress. And that's why God allows trouble to come to the church because it makes you appreciate the Holy Ghost and it makes you protect your spiritual gatherings. Oh, ain't nothing makes me want to go to church more than a tyrant of a king for a governor that says you can't go to church. Ain't nothing makes me want to dance more and worship more than somebody telling me I can't, than an enemy trying to contaminate my spring. Amen. Preachers are God's way to make us aware of the problems that need solving in order to facilitate future miracles. Dreams come in a size too big in each of our lives because we have to grow to fit into them. And if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. Amen. Ah, my wife lives in fear of my dreams. My leaders live in fear of my dreams. And they say, when is it enough? When is it enough? Enough. Hey Amen. Your dreams ought to frighten you. And if they don't, it's, it's a revelation that you don't know who Jesus is. Oh, he's got the cattle on a thousand hills. 
He knows the hairs on your head. That's not a big feat for some of us. Amen. But he knows how many hairs you got on your head. He sees the sparrows when they fall. Hey, he knows the stars by name and by number. Amen. If that God is that big, surely he can take care of your mortgage this month. Surely he can take care of your car note this month. Surely he can help you with your mortgage problem and your house problem. The eyes of the Lord are going throughout the whole earth looking for someone that he can show himself strong on their behalf. I wonder if he's going to find somebody here tonight. He's going to look no further than me because I will get help from the Lord tonight. John 9 and 7, you know what the Lord told that blind man? Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sin. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing, fully committed, fully committed. Don't worry about your enemies. They got, they got the arm of flesh. As long as you're in God's care, you've got the Lord on your side. Just stay fully committed to the Lord. Just stay fully committed to the Lord. God's going to give you help. God's going to send his angel army upon your enemies. Hallelujah. How many of you feel the Holy Ghost here tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 40, 6 and 1 said, God is my refuge and strength, the very present help in the time of trouble. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. You said, I can't even fathom that the earth being removed. None of us can even figure out what that means. And the mountains are carried into the sea. None of us have even seen that. You can't even in your wildest imagination fathom what that means. Oh, but God said, even when the earth is removed and the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, I'm still going to be your refuge. Everything that can go wrong, might go wrong, and will go wrong, but I'm still your refuge. If you'll stay committed to me, if you'll keep your mind made up, if you'll keep your heart fixed, I am your refuge and strength. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of our God. God is in the midst of her, Selah. That means a musical rest. Take a break and think about what I just told you. I'm looking for somebody tonight that I can show myself strong on their behalf. Have you any mountains you think of? Impossible. Have you any valleys you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things not impossible.
happy day.